Welcome to Folk Roots Radio. I'm Jan Hall. All the best in Folk Roots Americana, singer-songwriters and blues, and artist interviews. On Folk Roots Radio, as we love to say every week, we're all about the music and the people that make it. Now, coming up, we have another great interview for you. We're giving over the whole of this episode to an interview with Canadian poet and singer-songwriter Bob Jensen. Bob Jensen has been writing poems and songs all his life, and he also has some great stories to share with us. So settle down and enjoy the poetry and music of Bob Jensen on Folk Roots Radio. Before this blazing bonfire of the vanities of God, when soft the warm west wind is a feather on my face, playful as the infant's laughing eyelashes, a monarch in the sweet caress of flight. These eyes and ears of God, this breath stolen of wonder, the hungry skin of solitude, a mouth that chafes for one small drop of nectar to quench the thirst for color in the soul. I am high upon this holy breeze, basking in the warmth of the valley's maple embers, as roaming V's of southbound geese herald in the dawn and split the morning sky like kindling for yearning in the hungry hearth of man, dividing into realms of east and west, the captive heavens, each of whom would kill the fatted calf and claim the wayward sun as its own. Raise your arms in wonder, cast the shadow of a dove, expel your breath in three small words, it is done. For the heart of man is crucified upon this peaceful hill where providence is burning for beauty on its knees. That's Canadian poet and singer-songwriter Bob Jensen with his poem to God in Three Small Words, recorded live in Brisbane, Australia with support from great Canadian guitarist Tony McManus. You can find that poem on Bob's 2020 album, Live in Australia, March 2020. Now, Bob Jensen has been writing poetry, songs and stories his whole life. And to learn more about this wonderful life purpose and Bob's career in spoken word and music, we're pleased to welcome him to Folk Roots Radio. It's great to have you join us today. Oh, it's fantastic to be here, Jen. We've been talking about this for a while, so it's, it's really great to finally connect. I got to be honest, when I was trying to decide what to start with, I couldn't not pick that poem. To me, it's just a, a wonderful way to introduce people to an artist that, you know, obviously is very skilled in spoken word, but I love the way that you, you know, you work with other people to produce this wonderful sound. I know it's interesting from a poet's point of view. I mean, the big question is, you know, do you like your poetry to be delivered in performance without, you know, some sort of support musician? Or do you prefer that you actually build that ambiance around it? I'm curious to know what you think. I enjoy both uh, processes. And, you know, I I think of the, uh, the musical accompaniment as kind of value added poetry and, and certainly in the skilled hands of somebody like Tony McManus, who's not only a, an incredible artist on a technical basis, but who also has a, a deep understanding of, of lyrics and, and who has such artistry. It can really, I think it can really embellish, you know, what other, otherwise would just be sort of dry spoken word. 
I've done both. I've done performances with musicians. Uh, I did a, a festival in England one time with Jake Morley, who's another really wonderful guitar player, and uh, enjoyed that. And I've done some, you know, some readings on my own. As a matter of fact, I'll be releasing an album very soon uh, that was recorded in Port Ferry, Australia, which is just spoken word. And it's, uh, it's much more focused. It, it's more like, um, like a workshop. I enjoy doing that because it gives me uh, an opportunity to talk about the material. And I love working with talented people. And I've been very fortunate uh, to be able to bring some really wonderful people to the table it's just fun, you know. When you when you uh, are lucky enough to be able to get uh, a wonderful artist to sign on and 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 do a project with you, it's very satisfying. I want to put a a big shout out for this live in Australia March twenty twenty album because one of the things I noticed, and you know, it's coming around to festival season again, I guess, and the ambiance that you've achieved here, not just with the fact that you have a a guitarist as skilled as Tony McManus on there with you. But the fact that you have an audience there, that you're talking about each individual poem before it actually is performed, it all flows together so well. And when you have a performance like that, you know, it's a great introduction to your music. And I want to thank you for putting it out. And it's certainly from my point of view, I thought, wow, you know, this is somebody I really need to get to know a bit more about. Well, thank you. That's uh, that's very kind of you. That that was a lot of fun to do. I still can hardly believe that you know I was able to tour in Australia and uh, perform my poetry down there. And as a matter of fact, when we were at Port Ferry, which is quite a, a sort of a almost a legendary festival uh, in Australia, they they gave they gave me a headline uh, spot. Uh, for my poetry. It was a 70-minute set. <clears throat> it was a huge tent. I think there were, I don't know, like 1,500 people or, or something. And I had a lot of special guests. I had uh, Tim Chase on uh, from here in Canada, mm -hmm. from the East Pointers. And I had Shane Howard, who's very famous in Australia. He's kind of like, like an Australian Bruce Coburn. And so I had all these people performing my music and poetry it was uh, tremendously satisfying to be able to do that because, you know, I reached the point when my kids were little where I was so busy with my day job that I just, I stopped writing because I just, there just were not enough hours in the day. I wouldn't say I stopped completely, but I, I certainly slowed down to a trickle. And uh, a few years ago, I thought I'm going to jump back in. You know, and it didn't have a plan or anything like that. I started writing and putting it out on my own social media. And the first album I made, I recorded at home on a Zoom digital mic. Uh, it was called uh, A Blossom for Job. And that got me on the radio and uh, it made me feel like there was some potential to what I was doing. So uh, I just kind of followed my nose, you know, and that, that's essentially what I've done my whole life, sometimes with good results. And, you know, sometimes when you follow your nose, you, you end up taking too many left turns. But uh, I've, never, I've never been ambitious, particularly. I mean, I'm very happy when my material gets on the radio. And, and I have to say, I'm surprised that my poetry has done so well at radio because it does get played, uh, gets played a lot in England. It's received a lot of airplay in Australia. I get some play at home here in Canada. And so I'm, I'm just rolling with it, you know. I want to turn the clock back and talk about how things started for you, because I, as I mentioned at the beginning, you're a poet and a singer-songwriter. So take us back and tell us how you got started with your music and poetry career. I've always written. When I was a, a kid in grade school, in grade three and four, I still have the little notebooks of uh, songs. I was trying to write pop songs. I was already listening to the Beatles and groups like that. And, and then when I was in grade five or six, uh, I tried to write a novel based on a kind of a Jack London 
sort of a story after reading Call of the Wild and, and White Fang. And I started uh, writing songs serious, semi-seriously, I guess, maybe in high school. A lot of the songs that I was writing in the early days had to do with uh, my traveling because when I was in grade 10, I read Woody Guthrie's Bound for Glory, his autobiography, and I was so smitten with it that I decided that I wanted to try to live that life of, you know, an itinerant worker and street musician and et cetera. So when I was 17, after grade 11, I, I made my first big trip. I hitchhiked from northern New Brunswick to Vancouver Island and back. I was gone the whole summer and uh, just loved it. And so after I finished school, I went on the road for several years and I backpacked and I worked odd jobs and I went to sea and uh, I was all over the place. I was up in the Yukon and Alaska and I was down into the deep south. Uh, lived on the streets in Florida for a while in Tampa, which was uh, quite an amazing experience, you know, coming from a small town in Canada. Uh, I was busking in San Francisco and, and New York. I just absolutely loved it for all the crazy things I've done in my life and some that I might regret. That's certainly not one of them. That was, I still to this day kind of carry the lessons uh, that I learned, uh, you know, being a young man on the road. I've certainly learned to appreciate things. You know, I, I still have this profound sense of appreciation just to have a, a roof over my head, you know, and, and to hear the fridge kick in because uh, there were years when I, I didn't have that, and I lived very much hand to mouth. Uh, but they were wonderful experiences, really uh, cool experiences, and and that kind of became a big part of who I was. I think through the rest of my life. You started writing songs at the same time. I want to play a song that you just released. Although I think it actually goes back to what 1984. Uh, Nova Scotia Breeze. Tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, Nova Scotia Breeze. I don't even remember offhand exactly when I wrote it, but it, it would have been in the uh, in the early 80s. And um, I mean, I'm from New Brunswick, but at the time I was listening to Alistair McGilvery and, and all of these Ryan's Fancy, all these really wonderful uh, Nova Scotia artists. And I, I love that music. And I was also traveling to Nova Scotia. And so uh, the imagery in the song actually mostly comes from a little village in northern New Brunswick uh, called Charlo, uh, which is very pretty. And it's, it's not unlike parts of Cape Breton. So, uh, you know, Nova Scotia breeze, I guess I was I kind of was romanticizing all the, the whole Nova Scotia culture and history. And I tied it in with... Uh, uh, with some images from home. And then I entered the song uh, in the PEI Songwriters Competition in 1993, and I won. And part of the prize was uh, that I would get to record it professionally. So I thought, I've never done anything country, and I've got access to whatever kinds of musicians I want. So we did it in a, in a country style. And uh, I was very happy with the way it turned out, but I lost the tape after a couple of years, searched high and low for that thing. And only about a year ago did I come across it and I had it remastered and I, I sent it to my publisher and I said, what do you think? Should I put this thing out there? And he said, oh yeah, it sounds great. Put it out. And so it's just kind of fun to find this thing that was 30 years old and Try to give it some wings. Nova Scotia breeze Running through the trees The tantrum my marshes Welcome me back home again To a sweet Cape Breton girl From an old unhurried world Of buccaneers and privateers Coal miners, fish and rum can you tell me where my home lies? Wondered this for years. Now I need some solitude. Think I might find it here. 
As I gaze out on the ocean Some dory pulling traps I see my brother making hay Beneath that old straw hat His little girl is laughing As a mother sets each place For fiddleheads and salmon God, how I love this place Can you tell me where my home lies? Wondered this for years I need some solid to think I might find it here The cities, plains and mountains They lured me far away To people, times and spaces I don't regret today But still I'll stop and wonder No matter where I roam And gaze past the lonely sunrise To the east coast in my home and Can you tell me where my home lies? Wondered this for years Now I need some solitude You'd think I might find it here Nova Scotia breeze Running through the trees And your mind might just welcome me back home again To a sweet gay Breton girl From an old honoured world Of buccaneers and privateers Gold miners, fish and rum And can you tell me where my home lies? I've wondered this for years Now I need some solitude You think I might find it here I pray thee, show me kindness when you break the morning sky. Send your light forth softly so I might adjust my eyes. And careful when you sing to wake me from my grateful sleep. For the fairest song upon the land is sure to make me weep. And though I love the moon, I know I must embrace the day. Though the tears upon the windows of my soul are smudged and gray. Will you send a drop of sunshine to quench this thirsty heart, to keep my voice from breaking when the parching day does start? there, this is Janice Ian, and you're listening to Folk Roots Radio with Jan Hall. Thanks for being here. Go forth into that morning and ride towards the sun and climb your hundred apple trees before the day is done. And never count the seconds or the paths your heart will trace and savor each sweet moment that the sun shines on your face. And when the tide is out, Breathe deeply, you are free. Assume the siren soul of the wild and restless sea. And never waste a morning spent idle in your heart, for the orbit of the planet seems much slower at the start. But the days of endless summer and the everlasting nights are but a cruel illusion obscured by childhood's rites. And when your heart awakens and love comes to the fore, never leave those feelings stand outside the timid door. For the apple you leave hanging while you make your bashful plans will drop before the sun into another boy's keen hands. 
beyond the squandered afternoon when night drops like a stone but one word written in your heart and that word is alone and if you'd see a sunrise that brings you peace of mind above all things avoid the sting of acts that are unkind for unkindness is a verdict for each petty schoolyard crime and regret is but an echo that does not fade with time. So ride into that morning, go careless, swift and free, and assume the siren soul of the morning's restless sea. And never leave a rosy apple hanging on the bough, love as if the only moment left is here and now. And for each fallen sparrow who sports a broken wing, let kindness be the only song the day will hear you sing. So seize the day and love the way you'd have love come to you. May your kindness be as boundless as the ocean's deepest blue. That's Bob Jensen with two poems, Prayer to Morning and The Poet's Advice to His Younger Self. You can find them both on Bob Jensen's wonderful 2019 album, Prayer to Morning. Bob Jensen's our special guest on Folk Roots Radio today. I got to ask the question, poet's advice to his younger self. You must have learned a lot in your time as a, a poet and a songwriter. What is the, I think, the most important thing you would want to share to your younger self or to someone maybe coming up, um, you know, who is interested in poetry or interested in music? The advice that I would give to my younger self is seize the day. Don't waste a single sunny morning. Get off the couch, ride your bike, climb those apple trees, scour the beaches, get into the woods, because it goes by faster than you can imagine, and it, it won't get any better than this. And you know the old adage uh, that, youth is wasted on the young it's it, it kind of is and it isn't it's it's not that it's wasted on the young but i think it's not until much later that we can appreciate just how absolutely beautiful it was and how fleeting you know there's there's a great line from a song by ron hines that i've thought of uh, many many times and and it goes uh, you barely savor the moment and you spend a lifetime dwelling upon it. And man, that is just so true. There have been beautiful moments in my life, and they were so fleeting. And, and at the time, you didn't even realize really how wonderful maybe they were. But, you know, you look back 10 years later, 20, 30 years later, and you think, man, that, that, was, that was just sweet. That was beautiful. My advice to my younger self and, and also to... Uh, my my younger self as a writer would be just just do it you know I, I wish I had written more uh, but you know hindsight is is twenty twenty but seize the day and you know whether you're a ten year old child or a fifty year old child you know there's a train coming for all of us and don't just hang around the station waiting for it get out you know, get out and, and, and enjoy this uh, best of all possible worlds. Prayer to Morning, I absolutely love. It's available as a 2019 album from Bob Jensen. And there's also a book, a collection, I think, A Sense of Wonder, 50 poems that you've written since you started back again, I think, basically in 2014. Is that right? Yeah, I did release a book of poetry called A Sense of Wonder, and it's it's 50 uh, poems that, yes, I believe are all written uh, since uh, 2014. And there's another book that I wrote called Homage à Chagall. It's funny how things happen sometimes. One day uh, I decided to go for a nap, and I laid down, and my uh, my monkey brain is always working. And and uh, I, I started thinking about what it would have been like if Chagall, the Russian Franco painter who I've loved my whole life, if he had painted Christ's triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. 
the images started coming to me and I was thinking, geez, I got to remember this when I get up. There was just a flood of this stuff that was coming. And so finally I said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to write a poem. So I get up and I scribble down this poem called Christ in Chagall at the Gates of Jerusalem. And I really enjoyed it. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to write 100 poems interpreting the paintings of Marc Chagall. So I had some books on his artwork, and I started picking away at it. And it just so happened that that year, my daughter was going to be in Europe uh, for several months. And she had a great little apartment right downtown Montreal. And I thought, I'm going to go up to Montreal and hang in Emily's apartment and I'll work while I'm there and just, you know, enjoy the city. I'm also a great lover of the visual arts. It's whenever I travel, it's one of the first things I do as I head for the galleries. So I went online to see what was happening at the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. And to my great surprise and greater delight, there was a massive Chagall exhibit, 350 pieces. And so I went to Montreal and I was there for five weeks. And uh, I thought I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to sit in front of the paintings and, and write. And the first time I went to the gallery, it was, it was the very day I arrived in Montreal. I was so excited. And I went to the gallery and uh, as I entered the exhibit, uh, the lights were muted and there was klezmer music playing. And I just started to see all these incredible canvases. I've seen a lot of great art exhibits in my life, but this was the, the most breathtaking one of all. And, and I just started to cry. It was so beautiful. I, I, I sort of felt so foolish. I was going from canvas to canvas, sort of breathless, with tears streaming down my cheeks. At just the beauty of it. Chagall is just the most wonderful artist. And uh, so what I would do from that day on is every day after I'd finished work and, and also on weekends, I would go to the gallery and I'd walk around until I found a painting that I thought, yeah, I'd like to try to interpret what Chagall is saying. And so um, I, I would do that. I would find a painting and I would sit down and I, I would try to interpret the, the work uh, through uh, through poetry. And so I did, uh, I did write a hundred poems, but uh, you know, as an unknown poet, getting published is not the easiest thing in the world. And rather than self publish this one, uh, because I thought, you know, I thought it, it, it has some potential. It's with my agent. We haven't found anyone yet, but I'm, I'm hoping that eventually uh, we will, as uh, I would really like to get that out. And and there will be some more um, uh, print books coming as well as audio books. I've, I've got a ton of stuff that I'm working on. I'll, I'm always working on on new and, and different things. I just, I'll, I'll get a crazy idea in my head and I just run with it. And sometimes they kind of peter out, but other times they, they turn into finished products eventually. One of the paintings is called Cow with a Parasol. And it's just a, a painting of a cow with an umbrella. And Chagall would never let uh, logic get in the way of beauty, uh, which I really liked about him. He, uh, he has a childlike sense about him. And uh, so I thought that was kind of a, a nice metaphor. So I, I wrote a poem uh, based on the painting Cow with Parasol, which Chagall painted in 1946. I will not build a fence around the color or the love that wells up from the source of every source of light or each pure nascent note that leaves the tiny fledgling when the sky makes him its tutor. I will not send the boy into the tired world of men to drown his sense of wonder, for boys do not mature like wine when first they taste the vinegar of tedium or the hemlock of conformity. No, I will leave it to the practical to build their roads and bridges while I construct a thousand small bouquets and stir these coals that burn like the center of the sun, searing like the never-blinking eye of God to which all vision flows. For we who wet our lips in the cool dark pool of the hidden source of wonder 
know that light and streaming color are not our masters, but the drumming in our breasts like the meadow's small explosion when first the grouse are startled to the heavens and wonder come like thunder, crashing down as darkness leaves the sky again to give another virgin to the world when Christ is in the swallow's pirouette and the lilac wind that fills your thirsty lungs. Thank you very much. That's a sneak peek into the next audiobook that Bob Jensen will be releasing, and one of the poems inspired by one of the paintings by Marc Chagall. From the Blowney Session, recorded live in a bookstore in Port Ferry, Australia, in March 2020, that was Cow with a Parasol. Bob Jensen's our special guest on Folk Roots Radio today. I want to dip back into your poetry and play one of your most powerful poems, A Heavy Millstone. Tell us about this one. Well, when I was a kid, you know, growing up in a little town in New Brunswick called Dalhousie, uh, it, it was a wonderful, welcoming, warm community. And we had incredible freedom as kids. We could go where we want, do what we wanted. Uh, but there was a darkness in the community that I didn't find out about until much later. And that darkness was... Uh, there were priests, Catholic priests, and in particular, one priest who just molested dozens of kids, including a lot of my good friends and even my brother. You know, later on, many years later, I, I kind of I had a bit of a public fight in, in the press uh, with the Catholic Church up there to try to give these people a voice about what had happened. Because, of course, it was all swept under the rug, and some people wanted to deny that it had even happened. And there were two times when I was speaking to victims of abuse where, as I brought it up, they they just kind of crumbled. Uh, in one case, uh, my own brother, and, and he's very fine with being public with this. You know, he just, he kind of went down on the floor and, and almost into the... F- not the fetal position, but he was sort of curled up and and he was crying and he sounded like a child crying. And I thought, my God, he's still back there. He's still back there with that priest. And and, and it happened with another guy I spoke to where he just, he said, I can't, I can't. And he started crying. And I realized that a lot of these people, they had something very important to say, but they just couldn't get it out. You know, they were so broken that it was very difficult for them to try to to talk about what happened. So I thought, I'm going to try to give them a voice. So that's what a heavy millstone is. It, it's about what happened in that community. And it was my, um, my attempt uh, to give a voice to people who, I guess, in some ways, maybe had their voice taken away uh, by the traumas that, that were inflicted upon them. And of course, I would like to thank Tony uh, for being uh, my accompanist. I'm very lucky to have an artist of his caliber uh, working with me. So the last piece I have, I call a heavy millstone. And uh, I grew up in northern New Brunswick in in an area that was very Catholic. And there was just rampant sexual abuse uh, in the church in those days. And it was hushed up. And I didn't find out until many years later that literally dozens of my friends had been molested and, and even my own brother. And um, a lot of those people have a hard time speaking about what happened. And this was my attempt to give them a voice, a heavy millstone. gathered, we, the faithful, when summoned by that bell, the small, the weak, the innocent, drawn to its knell. Three hours hid the sun when that vulgar show began, the rapist 
with the Eucharist upon his filthy hands. Hands that tore the fleece from the smallest faithful lamb and hands that left the soul defiled and primed it to be damned. And when his rape had finished and mass had then begun, he placed the holy host upon the slaughtered lamb's young tongue. One hundred faithful in their pews knew well the father's sin, but offered up those trusting doves, their precious, helpless kin. Men who to a burning house to save the child within would rush without a thought allowed that sacrificial sin. And women, selfless shepherds who were turned back at the inn, sat silent and obedient while the faithful flock was thin. And in that great cathedral built to glorify his God, the bishop killed the lamb when he spared the priest his rod. And for every priest and layman who hid the vulgar truth, may there be a heavy millstone to justify lost youth. Thank you all so very much. You're very kind. Thank you. The Youngins, and uh, you're listening to Four Croots Radio with Jan Hall. That's Bob Jensen with a heavy millstone from his wonderful live album, Live in Australia, March 2020. Bob Jensen's our special guest on Folk Roots Radio today. We're chatting about his poetry and music. And Bob, I want to ask you about your process. I imagine, do you travel with a, a notebook all the time? I mean, you you just talked about you know, being in the museum and starting to write poems about the Chagall paintings. And I was just wondering what, how you actually, you know, go about things. I mean, you, you just collect your thoughts and then see if anything starts to, uh, to spark. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know if I really have a process per se. I do carry a little journal with me. Uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm out, uh, walking on a beach or just whatever, I always have a little book in, in my day pack with me. Sometimes I'm inspired by something that's right in front of me and I sort of almost feel like I urgently have to get it down. Other times I might not really have anything, but I think I, I haven't written in a few days. I really should sit down and, and see if I can, you know, come up with anything. Usually it's, you know, they say the muse. Uh, usually it's an inspiration that starts me uh, writing and and. Sometimes when I'm really inspired by something, the images and the words come so quickly that I just, I don't even pause between lines. I'm just writing frantically and, you know, line after line after line. And some of those poems that have had very little thought put into them, you know, they're just very spontaneous, I think have been some of the better poems uh, that I've written. And so uh, when I'm lucky enough to, you know, to have that kind of inspiration, I don't even like to think about it. I just, I just kind of go with it. And it's, uh, as an artist, it's, it's really fun. And that's why, you know, a, a good friend of mine said, well, why did you put out an album of cover songs? Because I, I did a few years ago. The, the simple answer is because it was fun. It was just great fun. And again, that, that, that was another case of following my nose because um, I had been planning to do a follow-up spoken word album to uh, Prayer to Morning. And so I was in the studio with a really wonderful producer, 
uh, here in Charlottetown by the name of Chris Corrigan. And we, we recorded a few poems. And I say, you know, I said, I've been thinking I wouldn't mind trying to record a, a song. It's been so long since I sang, you know, other than like in the shower and in the car. And I, I don't even know if I could still do it. You know, I, I'd like to try something. You say, yeah, sure, whatever. It's, you know, it's your dime. So um, uh, an old favorite of mine was a, a sort of a bit of an obscure song by Bob Dylan called Tomorrow is a Long Time. So I said, well, why don't we try this? So he said, yeah, sure. So he he laid down a, a guitar part and I put down the vocals and I went home. And and later that day, he sent me a rough mix. And I thought, geez, that, that's not bad. That You know, it's... It's better than I thought it would be, and uh, so I thought, ah, let's do a let's do an album of songs instead of poetry, just like that. And I didn't have really any songs of my own, so at that time I hadn't been writing, or I didn't have enough anyway to do an album. So I thought, well, there are all these wonderful songwriters who I've followed all my life, many of whom have very obscure songs. So I think I'll try to do a, an album of cover songs, songs that are, you know, unless you're a fan of the genre, wouldn't terribly, wouldn't be terribly well known. So that's why, for example, you know, I included Tomorrow is a Long Time by Bob Dylan instead of, you know, Blowing in the Wind or one of the more famous songs. And, and with Gordon Lightfoot, you know, I, I did Sit Down, Young Stranger, which is like, it's a 50 some year old song and it's not one of his better known songs but i mean i didn't know if i saw the point of of just kind of being a jukebox and 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 doing all these famous songs so uh that's what we decided on and we were able to uh, enlist the support of some really great people doug cox played slide guitar and dobro and and doug is one of the greatest musicians in the country and uh, Emma LeBlanc from uh, Vishten contributed uh, some penny whistle and some keyboards and some beautiful uh, backing vocals. And uh, my old friend James Keelahan, and that's kind of a funny story. I, I met James Keelahan around 1985 when I was working with the Jasper Heritage Folk Festival in Jasper, Alberta. I was one of the founding members of that festival. And uh, Margaret Crystal was one of the acts that year. And uh, she had a guitarist with her by the name of James Keelahan, who I'd never heard of. And we had a little warm up for the festival the night before at a local church. And uh, so this young guy, uh, Keelahan, he got up on stage and he sang Lies by Stan Rogers. And I thought, holy cow, I just knew. I heard one song and I thought, this guy's going places. I was, at that time, I was in Alberta working as a folk singer. I actually tried to get him, I, I invited him to form a duo with me. And he, uh, he very graciously uh, declined. But all these years later, I'm now his booking agent. And that's what that's what my day job is. I, I I'm a booking agent for folk and roots artists from around the world. So we've been friends for a long time. I fired him off a note and I said, "Hey James, I said, you know, I'm doing this album of obscure songs by artists who I like, and and I thought I would uh, put my skies on there. How would you like to, you know, do a verse?" And he got back to me. He said, "Yeah, sign me up." So I I uh, I I did that song with James Keelahan, which was really wonderful and very generous of him to do that. That's, that's how that album came to be. And again, it's just, you know, I, I think if you, if you get too tied down in, in plans and, you know, and you get, you, you tie yourself to a kind of a rigid uh, regime, sometimes you miss out on spontaneity. And I found that spontaneity can yield some wonderful things. And, and another thing I've learned, too, is that when you collaborate with people who are really talented, don't tell them what to do. They, they know what to do. Just say, you know, okay, well, here's a song you're on. Just you do your thing. And if you let them shine and do their thing the way they want to do it, 
it'll be much better, I think, than anything that you might, you know, suggest uh, that they do. I think uh, if you're collaborating with with wonderful people, you should be just completely hands off. And so far, it's worked really well with, with the collaborations I've done. Take a walk under my skies Try to see it once the way I do If you look out through my eyes You'll find a different point of view Everything changes Every fact wears some disguise Cast off your troubles Take a walk under my sky Not one rule since you've been born That's not been tattered That's not been torn not one thing you cared about That's not been darkened by the shadow of doubt Hard times Hard times Take a walk under my skies Try to see it once the way I do If you look out through my eyes You'll find a different point of view Everything changes Every fact wears some disguise Cast off your troubles Take a walk under my sky Not one green that you can hold That's not been has not been sold Not one payment You can make It's like a thirst You can never slake Hard times Hard times Take a walk under my sky Try to see it once the way I do, if you look out through my eyes, you'll find a different point of view. Everything changes, every fact wears some disguise, cast off your troubles, take a walk under my sky. That's Bob Jensen with My Skies from his covers album for the sake of the song, and that features James Keelahan, the writer of that song. Great performance and a great album. And I'd actually like to pop straight back into the album to play another song. And what I'd like to do is to play Woody Guthrie's Pastures of Plenty. Obviously, making a a covers album like this, you really could not not include a, a Woody Guthrie song. Well, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I I read his autobiography when I was just a kid. And then I, you know, I wanted to be like Woody Guthrie. I wanted to live that lifestyle. And and, um, his politics uh, informed me for the rest of my life. You know, he was such a champion of the underdog. And I also became a great fan of, of Pete Seeger, uh, and then much later in life, uh, when Pete was 89, I, I booked his last full tour. And so uh, I've always loved those guys, those early seminal folk singers, you know, the 
the guys who inspired Bob Dylan and Joan Baez and all those people who inspired a whole uh, generation. And yeah, when I was thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to, you know, do this cover uh, album of cover songs. I, I have to have a Woody Guthrie song in there and uh, pastures of plenty. Again, it's, you know, it's not one of his most uh, more famous songs, but it's one of my favorites. It's just an absolute beautiful song. And it, it, it so exquisitely uh, tells the story of life uh, from the perspective of a migrant uh, worker. And, you know, those people, those people were up against everything. They, they, it, their life was so hard. But yet you hear that voice saying, my pastures of plenty must always be free. Those, those people, they had such a profound understanding of the value of the land and, and what the land meant. I thought that, that's such a beautiful thing. So it's a beautiful sentiment, and it's a fantastic song. Again, it's not one of his better-known ones. I thought it would really be fun to ask Emma LeBlanc, again, from uh, the group Vishten, to do it as a duet. And uh, so she did. And uh, Chris Corgan uh, plays the guitar. Doug Cox, you'll hear uh, on the dobro. Pastures of Plenty. With my life, if need be, 'cause 
Hey, this is Lizzie Hoyt, and you are listening to the fabulous Folk Roots Radio with Jan Hall. That's Bob Jensen with Pastures of Plenty from his wonderful covers album for the sake of the song that came out in 2021. Bob Jensen's our special guest on Folk Roots Radio today. And Bob, I think you actually did a show about Woody Guthrie at a festival in the summer of 2021. Is that right? Yeah, I did one at uh, uh, Stan Rogers Folk Festival last year on the the music and poetry of Woody Guthrie. And my idea was to invite other artists to come and perform that material to a a, a kind of a, a scripted show. I did invite some old friends and colleagues, people like uh, James Keelahan, and Lenny Gallant and Catherine McClellan, Dave Gunning. We had a main stage show. It really went over very well. I was very happy with it. And um, I I was hoping to do some festivals this summer, but my life is just too busy this year. I have also been invited to go to a festival uh, in Denmark, the famous Tunner Festival uh, in August. And so I'm thinking I, I might like to do that So anyway, I'm not doing any festivals this year, but I'm hoping uh, next year to get back out and do some more festivals. And and I also want to get back out and and tour internationally in the next uh, 18 to 24 months. I want to squeeze another track in from the wonderful For the Sake of the Song album. It's actually another duet with Emma LeBlanc from Vishten, and that's I Hope That I Don't Fall In Love With You, which is, of course, the wonderful... Tom Waits song. Tell us a little bit about why you wanted to record that one. And so, yeah, I was introduced to Closing Time by a friend of mine in the early 80s, and and it's just such an absolutely beautiful record, and that's probably my favorite uh, track on it. I have a very limited range with my voice. You know, I I don't think of myself as being a particularly gifted singer, so I, I have to choose material that fits within my range. So, you know, as I was looking to do uh, stuff for this cover album, I, I wanted to pick certain songs, but they had to be songs that I, I would be able to, uh, you know, to hopefully do justice to. And and this is one that I could sing. It's a beautiful song. And um, we did, we actually did two versions. We, we did one with just me, and then we did a radio edit uh, with, with a duet with Emma. And I, again, I just, I love everything that we've done together. I, I, I would really hope that uh, I can work with her again sometimes. And I was very happy with the way it turned out. makes me blue The music plays and you display your heart for me to see I've had a beer and now I hear you calling out to me And I hope that I don't fall in love with Should I offer you a chair? If you sit down with this old clown Take this frown and break it Before the evening's gone away I think that we could make it And I hope 
that I don't fall in love with you Well, the night does funny things inside a man These old tomcat feelings you can't understand I turn around to look at you You light a cigarette I wish I had the guts to bomb one But we've never met And I hope that I don't fall in love with you I can see that you are lonely just like me And you seem like you could use some company I turn around to look at you And you look back at me the guy you're with, he's up and split the chair next to you's free. And I hope that you don't fall in love with me. Now it's closing time. Music's fading out Last call for drinks, I'll have another stout I turn around to look at you You know where to be found I search the place for your lost face Guess I'll have another round And I think that I just fell in love with you That is Bob Jensen with I Hope That I Don't Fall In Love With You from his wonderful covers album, which is entitled For The Sake Of The Song. Bob Jensen's our special guest on Folk Roots Radio today. So, Bob, tell me, um, what other things are you working on? You mentioned that, unfortunately, you won't be doing as many festivals this year, but I think you have several projects that are on the go as well, don't you? I've, I'm always working on a lot of different things. As I mentioned, I, I um, doing cover songs is great fun. And so uh, I'm doing a couple more. They're kind of one-off projects. Uh, I, I've been a lifelong uh, fan, almost a disciple of Leonard Cohen. And um, I am going to be doing a cover of Suzanne, but it's going to be it's going to be different. The lead guitar will be handled by Juan Martin who's one of the greatest flamenco artists in the world. You know, he's, he's performed at the Sydney Opera House and Carnegie Hall and the Royal Albert Hall. He was chosen by uh, Guitar Player Magazine as one of the top three guitarists in the world. He's just a, a monster uh, of a player and, and a super nice guy. And, and he really likes the fact that Leonard learned to play guitar in no small part by taking a, a few lessons from a Spanish guy. And so that's why you can hear a kind of a flamenco sound when, when Cohen plays. And, and, you know, Cohen said if he hadn't met this guy uh, quite by chance, that all of his music, everything he ever would have written would have been quite different. Um, so anyway, Juan has uh, put down some incredible guitar tracks. We've also got Chris Corrigan from here in Charlottetown on, on guitar on that. And the harmonies are going to be done by Maria Dunn from Alberta, mm -hmm. who I'm sure you're well familiar with, a wonderful artist. And this will be the second project that we've collaborated on. 
And I'm also doing a version of Eleanor Rigby uh, with Ray Cooper, formerly a cellist for Oyster Band and a wonderful singer-songwriter in his own right. And he's uh, based out of Sweden now. So I've got those two projects on the go. I've been picking away at something I call other voices for, oh my God, it, it, it must be five or six years. And the idea there was to have other artists perform my music and poetry. And so I've got a lot of stuff that's in and ready to go. There are collaborations with Sylvia Tyson, Claire Lynch, you know, who's a wonderful bluegrass artist, triple Grammy uh, nominated artist, uh, Shane Howard from Australia, who I mentioned earlier, Moulettes from England, very creative uh, group, uh, Guy Davis, the bluesman from New York City. Uh, John Guslowski uh, recites a, a couple of poems on this album, and he's uh, he's an American poet who's been nominated twice uh, for the Pulitzer Prize, and he's on there. And there are some other artists as well. So that project is mostly ready to go, but I still have some I's to dot and T's to cross, and I'm hoping I might get that out later this year. And then I had started work on another Leonard Cohen project with a promoter from Halifax by the name of Brooks Diamond, who's quite a big promoter here in Atlantic Canada. We started uh, working on a Leonard Cohen show that would feature his songs and poetry and also stories about his life. And then I just got so busy. Sometimes I just, I, I go a bit crazy and I overextend myself. And, and I, I did that last year. I got into some projects that were really turned out to be much bigger than I thought they would be. And so some stuff had to kind of go to the side for a while, but I'm at the point now where I can start working again on, on the Leonard Cohen project. You know, I, I'm hoping to put out another book uh, this year. I, I've got enough material. It's just a matter of uh, finding the time to sit down and edit it, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, so tons of stuff, working on lots of stuff. It sounds like the, yeah, I, I have to say it, it's, it's always good. I always love talking to busy people and you are quite clearly one of those. So it's going to be exciting to see all this come together. If you want to learn more about what Bob Jensen's up to, you can go to his website, First time since august.com and you can uh, get all of the information on everything that he's been doing. You also um, were involved in actually more of a, a group uh, enterprise and it's interesting we're recording this interview on May Day which is also International Workers Day. I wanted to give you a chance Bob to talk about the Artists for Action project because I know that's something that you did in the last year. Yeah, well, that was one of the projects I was talking about that just it just took on a life of its own. And as, again, it was one of these things that it was actually uh, a friend of mine who sent me a note. He said, you know, which side are you on? The, the times are ripe for a redo, you know, and it's but instead of it being about labor, uh, you know, because that's what the original one was. It was about a, a brutal strike. Uh, that happened in in uh, in America. It should be about the rise of the right and, and the resurgence of fascism in North America and around the world. And I thought, geez, that's a great job, uh, a great idea. I'll do it. And I just decided, uh, okay, I'm going to do it. No budget, no nothing. I just, I was going to do it. And so um, I thought about it a little bit, and I I thought, you know, it would be fun to see if if I could get some other artists. To come on board and uh, and help out. So again, I my first uh, call was to my old friend James Keelahan, and he said, "Yep, sign me up, put me down." I thought, "Wow, that was easy." I wonder who else is out there. So I, I started asking people, you know, if they would like to do this, and everybody kept saying yes. You know, and Martin Simpson, a wonderful guitarist from England, he got on board. Tony. Guy Davis uh, signed up for it, and Ray Bonneville, and Oyster Band, you know, a real uh, legend in the UK and, and Europe. And so after I got about five or six artists, I thought, you know, I'm going to see if, if Bruce Coburn 
might be interested in this because first of all, I, I've loved Bruce Coburn, you know, since the seventies, I'm a huge fan. His, his, his music means the world to me. And, and I, I think I've learned to write in no small part from listening to his stuff, especially dancing in the dragon's jaws, which is a, a just a, an incredible album. And also, uh, I'm friends with his manager, uh, Bernie Finkelstein. We've known each other for a long time, and we get on like a house on fire. So I, I sent a little note to Bernie, and, and uh, I thought, ah, it's, it's a long shot. You know, I take a lot of long shots. It probably won't pan out, but who knows? So I, I sent him a note, and I think it was the next day he got back to me. He said, geez, that's a great idea. I think Bruce should do this. We're busy right now. We're getting ready for a tour. Give me a week, and I'll get back to you. So I didn't even want to go there. You know, I thought, oh, my God. <clears throat> and then a week later, I got an email from Bernie. And he said, Bob, I've got some great news for you. And I was thrilled. I was just thrilled to death. And then I thought, you know, when I saw Bruce and Ani DeFranco at Madison Square Garden at uh, Pete Seeger's 90th birthday party, that's the song that they did. Hmm. And I know Ani ha had recorded it on her own. I went in cold. I sent off a note. I said, hey, I'm doing this. These are the artists I've got so far. Bruce Coburn just confirmed we'd love to have Ani DeFranco. And two or three days later, I got the confirmation from Ani as well. So we ended up in total with 16 artists from four continents and then we also, if people want to watch the video, I asked people from all over the world if they'd want to do little cameos for the video, just hold up a sign, you know, saying, which side are you on? And we got some great people. We got uh, Rick Mercer, Eric Bogle, you know, the Scottish uh, songwriter now living in Australia, Alan Doyle from uh, Great Big C, uh, Miles Goodwin from April Wine, Ricky from the Trailer Park Boys, so all these people came together and, uh, and, and helped to put this thing together. And we did it on a shoestring budget. And the video, I have to say, it was the first video I ever attempted to put together in my life. And I, I literally had a budget of zero dollars. We did not spend one nickel on, on that uh, video. There was a, a local guy here who uh, did the editing. Uh, Isaac Williams uh, from Charlottetown. He did it pro bono, you know, for the cause. And uh, so, you know, again, this wasn't even something I, I thought of. It was it was just uh, a, something my friend mentioned. And I said, hell yeah, let's do it. And it just kind of took on a life of its own. And because there were so many artists involved and we were recording with people from all over the world and MP3s and waves and stuff was flying all over the internet. It, it really became much more involved than, than what I envisioned when I said, Oh hell yeah, I'll do that. But I got to say it, it really was worth it. I'm just thrilled with what happened. And I, I still can't believe that those, you know, wonderful artists, uh, said yes, you know, uh, agreed to record with me. Lucy McNeil from the Barra McNeils, Heather Rankin from the Rankin family. There's just so many great people on there. So uh, that was that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. It's a great way to finish, and I will make sure we've played the song on Folk Roots Radio before. We're going to play it in a few seconds. We've put the video up, but we will definitely put the video up again because it is, as you say, a great video, a great project. And Bob Jensen, I want to thank you for spending the time with us today. This is Artists for Action. And which side are you on? You're listening to Folk Roots Radio, and I'm Jan Hall. Thanks again, Bob. Thank you so much. Which side are you on now? Which side are you on? Which 
side are you on now? Which side are you on? They say they fight for freedom. There are no neutrals there. When you stand with hatred, you do not stand a prayer. Which side are you on now? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? My father was an airman. He flew in World War II. He would not see democracy defiled by men like you. Which side are you on now? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? And that's it. That's all we can squeeze into this episode. It was great talking to Bob Jensen today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Looking forward to seeing what he comes up with next. You can check out all our interviews and radio episodes on our website at folkrootsradio.com. You're listening to Folk Roots Radio, and I'm John Hall. We'll see you next time. Oh, man.